When most people think of a fighter jet, they picture speed, agility, and raw power slicing through the sky. But the FA-18 Hornet and its bigger, badder cousin, the Super Hornet, was built for something more. It wasn't just designed to win dogfights or drop bombs with surgical precision. It was engineered to take a beating and keep flying. In the chaos of modern combat, where a single hit can send lesser aircraft spiraling into the dirt, the Hornet has earned a reputation that goes beyond fighter. Pilots don't just call it tough, they call it a flying tank. That might sound like an exaggeration, until you hear the stories. There's the Hornet that limped that to its carrier with half its tail shot away. The one that flew home with a gaping hole in its wing after a near miss from a surface-to-air missile. Or the jet that took shrapnel through both engines and still managed to control landing. These aren't rare flukes, they're proof of a design philosophy that prioritizes survivability as much as performance. The F-A-18 wasn't born in a vacuum. It emerged in the late 1970s as the U.S. Navy's answer to a growing problem. Its aging F-4 Phantoms and A-7 Corsairs were running out of steam. The Phantom was fast and powerful, but it needed a dedicated crew and couldn't switch roles mid-mission. The Corsair could carry a heavy bomb load, but it wasn't built for air-to-air -air combat. The Navy wanted one aircraft that could do it all and survive long enough to do it again tomorrow. That's where the Hornet came in. From the start, Engineers at McDonnell Douglas knew they couldn't just build another sleek, fragile speedster. Carrier operations alone demanded ruggedness. Every landing on a carrier deck is basically a controlled crash. Planes slam down at 150 miles per hour and are yanked to a stop by arresting wires in under three seconds. That kind of punishment would tear apart a less robust airframe. So the Hornet was built with redundancy in mind, from its dual engines to its flight control systems. But survivability in combat goes far beyond withstanding hard landings. It's about what happens when enemy fire finds its mark. Unlike many modern fighters that rely heavily on stealth to avoid being hit, the Hornet accepts a simple truth. In the real world, you're going to get shot at. So instead of trying to be invisible, it's built to absorb damage and keep functioning. That starts with its airframe. The Hornet's skeleton is a mix of aluminum, titanium, and advanced composites light enough for agility, but strong enough to hold together when things go wrong. Critical systems are physically separated wherever possible. Hydraulic lines run on opposite sides of the fuselage. Flight controls are backed up by multiple channels. Even the fuel system is designed to minimize the risk of fire. Self-sealing fuel tanks and inert gas injection help prevent catastrophic explosions if the jet takes a hit. Then there are the engines. The FA-18 uses two General Electric F-404 turbofans, each pumping out 18,000 pounds of thrust. Having two engines isn't just about power, it's about redundancy. If one engine gets damaged, the other can often keep the jet airborne long enough to get back to base. That's not just theory. In real combat over Iraq and the Balkans, Hornets have returned with one engine completely out, flying on fumes and pilot skill. The cockpit is another fortress. The canopy is made of thick, bird-strike-resistant polycarbonate that can also deflect small arms fire. Inside, the pilot is surrounded by armor plating and protected by a state-of-the-art ejection seat that can fire safely at zero altitude and zero speed, meaning even if the jet is barely above the ground, there's still a chance to survive. But perhaps the Hornet's greatest survival tool isn't hardware, it's awareness. The jet's radar and electronic warfare suite give the pilot a near 360-degree picture of the battlefield. The AN-APG-73, and later the APG-79 in the Super Hornet, doesn't just track enemy aircraft. It can spot missile launches, identify radar threats, and even suggest evasive maneuvers. Coupled with the ALR-67 radar warning receiver and the ALE-47 countermeasures dispenser, the Hornet can detect danger, confuse enemy targeting systems, and deploy flares or chaff to throw off incoming missiles. This isn't passive defense, it's active survival. And it's why Hornets have flown thousands of combat missions in some of the most heavily defended airspace on Earth. From the skies over Baghdad during Desert Storm to the mountains of Afghanistan, and come home at a rate that surprises even their designers. Of course, none of this matters without the people who fly and maintain these jets. At Naval Air Station Limor, new Hornet pilots spend months learning not just how to fly, but how to fight 
and how to survive when things go wrong. They train in simulators that replicate everything from engine failure to battle damage. They practice emergency procedures until they're second nature. And they study real-world incidents where Hornets took hits and still made it back. Because in the end, the F-A-18's toughness isn't just about metal and code. It's about giving pilots confidence. Confidence that if they get into a tight spot, their jet won't quit on them. That's why decades after its first flight, the Hornet remains the backbone of U.S. carrier air wings, and why the Super Hornet continues to evolve with even more survivability features, like enhanced electronic warfare pods and better damage-resistant systems. But surviving hits isn't just about coming home in one piece. It's about staying in the fight long enough to finish the mission. And that's where the Hornet truly earns its title, not just as a fighter, but as a flying tank that refuses to go down.